Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to the Libra Lounge with Keisha podcast. Hope you guys have been having a fabulous week. This week has just been kind of like, I just feel like I want to take a nap all the time. Hasn't it been just like a lazy week? I just haven't felt like super motivated or, you know. It's Tuesday. It's like, Wednesday. Is it? Oh, shit, Our show right. says it's Wednesday. Now you guys know we film on Tuesday. <laughs> no, I really was confused. Sorry. Yeah, we actually do film the show on either a Monday or a Tuesday. And up until just a few seconds ago, we've all always done pretty good at hiding that fact. But leave it to the producer to fuck it all up. Uh, yes, we do pre-record. Um, I've lost my train of thought now because I, you know, it's that moment where you have been keeping a lie. It is that moment when everyone in the family knows that that baby is really the teenage daughter's baby, not that they're not siblings. And someone all of a sudden reveals that secret. No, 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 no. That's not your sister. That's your mom. I feel like that just happened right now. <laughs> Producer James has exposed the family secret. Anywho, happy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> Um, according to producer James, this is episode number 93, but you know what? It's probably just episode number two. And, you know, since we're just going to be revealing all the lies, I guess somebody put some holy water on him and say, you thou shalt tell the truth today. Um, if you are new to the podcast, welcome and make sure you're following us on Instagram and on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, iTunes, tune in app iHeartRadio, and the Laughable app, because I guess I'm a little bit funny. <laughs> Producer James said that we actually uh, just got into the Danish. <laughs> so after the episode with uh, Kale Lowry um, from Teen Mom 2, we had a lot of chart jumping when it came Thank to Thank you, like, Kale. Yeah, hey, girl. Did. Yeah, we got uh, broken the top 200 um, for comedy interviews in the U.S., in Great Britain, in Germany, in Denmark. We were like number 80 in Denmark. So all y'all need to just bow down. Bow down to me. Speaking of that, I need to watch how, how I show my hands because, you know, I came up here to the boutique because we had some work to do and I just had on my in-the-house clothes. So then I had to go home to throw some makeup on, change my shirt and stuff like that. Unfortunately, when I got home, I, I took off my jeans and I put on just like my house pants that are old and comfortable and raggedy. And I, 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 I forgot to take them off and put the jeans back on. Since we were letting all our secrets out. Yes, we all gonna tell the truth. Um, I came to testify. So uh, we're driving here and I'm like, oh my God, please do not let us get pulled off for, over for any reason. I've got a hole this big in the thigh of my pants. So you know how you see fat girls with jeans on and they have all those rips, just rips, rip, rip. mine is one big old rip. And then I realized I didn't put on lotion. So my knuckles are ashy, my feet are ashy. I just, I'm a hot mess, I'm a hot mess. So. If you are a friend of the Libra Lounge, like so many of you clearly are, <laughs> especially, in Denmark. especially overseas, always knew was a Brit. Oh, here is a fast, non-important fact. So my dad is always saying like, he thinks that we're great because we're Holmans. The movie Gone with the Wind, the actress Vivian Lee was married to a man and he was from Britain and his last name was Holman. Really? Yeah, and when I told my dad, he goes, I told you, we're just a, f a few people away from the crown. I was the original Meghan Markle, okay? But we just decided we just wanted to stay in the States, and we didn't want to have to deal with all those problems. But I am the OG Meghan Markle. I am the real princess of the people, as Diana. Hmm. All right, if you are a friend of the Libra Lounge, you know what time it is. It is time for The Gap. We know she has a really big mouth which sounds kind of dirty, and that's probably true, too. Let's gossip the gab with Keisha. All right, so recently I got into... Oh, let me just back that up. My husband feels an incredible need 
to always, 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 always have every single cable channel that is available. He also has to have every app, like a, a movie or a show app. We have shit that I don't even know that we have until I just mention it and he's like, we got that. We uh, got a new TV and it shows you like all the apps that you have. And I'm like, but he want to ask me, question me about how much a new wig is going to cost. And he has all these damn apps, including Disney Plus. Now I will say I was highly excited when I got Disney Plus and I started, you know, you put all your stuff in your queue that you want to watch because that's so Raven, which y'all know I'm a huge fan because Into the Future, I can see. We had Smart Guy on there, uh, Phil of the Future, even Stevens. I know I'm truly showing my, ah, Lizzie McGuire. I'm, tr I'm showing my age right now. So that was very exciting for me. But I'll tell you what was not exciting for me. I get it. You know, COVID has fucked up all of the theatrical debuts. They've had to push dates back. I know the studios are losing lots of money. I get it. But for Disney Plus to say we are going to stream the live action movie Mulan, cool. I'm like, okay, that's cool. It's going to be on Disney Plus. All right, all right, all right. We'll have, we'll have an Asian night at home and order some. A what is Mulan? Is she Chinese, Japanese, Korean? I think Chinese. We're going to have Chinese food. All of that, have it delivered to the house, everything. I'm going to wear my kimono. Kimonos are Chinese, right? I don't know. I think are they Chinese those or are Japanese? Japanese. Look, I don't need the Asians after me. So figure it out. Google it something. Make sure it's at the right damn thing. Basically, you have to look like Chun Li from Street Fighter 2. Yeah, we was going to do all of that. And then I was told by someone that you have to pay $30 to watch Mulan, okay? Which I'm thinking, okay, so that's thirty dollars for someone who already doesn't pay the monthly subscription. No, that is thirty dollars just to watch Mulan. I don't. It, is it even to buy Mulan? Can you watch it more than one time once you pay the thirty dollars? I think you pay to like the, the right to watch it as many times as you want to. I'm never gonna want to watch Mulan <laughs> that many times. The live action movie. Here's what I will do. We're just going to watch the original Mulan, everyone. The one where Eddie Murphy plays the little dragon. Yeah, he does the voice. You know, the guy who does the donkey in all the Shrek movies. Yeah, he's also the dragon in Mulan. How dare they charge 30 additional dollars? Y'all should have just waited until the economy went back up. Movie theaters were showing new movies. People were actually able to go outside without a mask on and have it at the movie theaters like it was supposed to be $30? Really? I think that's a bit, I kind of feel like that's a slap in the face. It made more sense to me when I heard it was $30. Okay, that's for someone who doesn't, isn't already a subscriber. But $30 to watch it? So I think what they did was uh, think, like, if you went to the movies, you'd pay, so two people, you and I going to the movies, cost a little over 30 bucks with tickets and food and all that. It's a fun night out. Mm -hmm. I guess they thought, Let's charge that much so we can try and get that much revenue like it were in the theaters. No, because here's the thing. Uh, Producer James and I, we are huge movie theater goers. Part of that is the ambiance of the movie theater, the smell of the buttery popcorn. If we go to dish it, theater, 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 we can also have dinner with our movie. And uh, we have some of the best margaritas. <laughs> this side of America okay so it, it, and, and I like being in a theater with other people who are excited about seeing the same film as, as me it's just I love going to the movies so you're going to charge me $30 for something that I've already paid for I got to cook my own food I got to buy and pop my own fucking popcorn and I got to there's animals running around the house and shit there's an old lady upstairs calling down for us to turn up the AC no no, James, no. I'm sorry, Mulan. I am all about the Asian people. I really am. My daughter is even a very big fan of K-pop, and we have bought one of many K-pop concert tickets. And what, what other Asian shit does oh. she make us buy? Uh, stickers and books, books and other movies. And then she bores us half to death with telling us about anime shit. Just, yo, yeah, oh, yesterday she wants to dress up as an anime character. For Halloween. And I'm like, girl, Halloween canceled. 
when, when they canceled that shit, like they're about to cancel Mulan. But yeah, I just didn't think that was cool of Disney Plus. Um, and apparently a lot of you didn't think it was cool either because it has tanked. How the fuck do your, does your movie tank and it's not even at the movie theaters? I don't know. <laughs> I I don't I don't get it I don't I, and I don't even know any of the actors who are in the live version of it. Well, and on top of that, like people who didn't have Disney Plus before COVID started hitting, mm -hmm. they didn't go and get it. I don't think they you know spent money they didn't have to go get Disney Plus right. then to pay more more money yeah to watch a movie yeah people a lot of people are still not working. Everyone's pretty selective, except for me, because I think I'm rich. Very selective on what they spend their money on. And, and you know, at a time like this, people are going more so to the apps uh, to watch things because we're not getting that many new scripted shows. We have a lot of reality TV. And even with that, there's episodes where you can tell that it's either has been shot on an iPhone or what is it, a GoPro and a stuff GoPro. like that because... They couldn't bring everyone, the whole film crew, into people's houses or, you know, we can't be around one another. It's cozy, damn it. Six feet apart. So, um, yeah, people are relying on these apps. So to charge, I just think it was tacky. on, And, and, and this is tacky. Like Disney's ever going to be fucking poor. I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, but you spend millions to make a movie. Then I mean, just wait. Yeah, I agree. I mean, how do you guys think I feel that I was not able to watch the new Fast and the Furious movie this summer? Okay, that, that put me in a state of depression, all right? Now, I'll be honest, I want to see that movie so bad, I might pay $30. I'm a bitch, and I'm going to email Vin Diesel and say that shit was fucked up. I did it anyway. Send me an autograph photo. But it's like, we get it. We, and I was excited about seeing Mulan at the movie theater so y'all fucked up i don't know how y'all are gonna fix this um sorry to all the newcomer com asian actors in the film who probably thought they were going to be discovered but since nobody's watching a 30 dollar movie i guess y'all gonna have to try it again all right moving right along um so trevor noah who is the host of it's the soup right the, he isn't doing a soup he's on what is no, it it's the daily show the daily show you know the little light skin boy um, he's actually mixed race, correct? Uh, yeah, I think so. But he's one of those mixed race people that has really kind of nappy ass hair. His dad must be African. Is one of the parents like African? Yeah, they're African. I think he's from Africa. Like I said, and I didn't know that, but the, you can always tell someone who's half white, half African, because they're, you can, that's too strong of African roots, okay? You are going to still have nappy hair. You're going to have nappy hair with just like, it's like God wanted to say, I'm going to give you a little bit. So he gives you like a touch, a small couple of inches of baby hair, but everything else is nappy. So anyway, Trevor Noah, who has been very vocal with the whole Black Lives Movement matter, he's been very pro-black, and in true black man fashion, he is dating a white woman. <laughs> it's Minka Kelly. People are not happy about this at all. Like, seriously, they are trying to cancel Trevor Noah. So let me get this straight. In the spirit of anti-racism, we want to cancel a black guy for dating outside of his race. Yes. And that makes sense. Why? Because it does. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, you know, let, let, let's not act like there has not been, there's a long-standing history of black men who find success in the entertainment world. We'll just stick to the entertainment world. And they start dating women outside of their race, okay? Even the ones who were married or dating a black woman who struggled with your po ass while you were going to film school, taking acting classes, taking improv acting classes on a soap opera until you finally made it and then you dump her ass for a white girl. That is how people are feeling right now. And let me tell you, the last thing that any man wants is for one black woman to be upset with him. Now you got millions of black women. I don't even know what to tell you. You better go ahead and cancel your whole entire self, Trevor Noah, because now, whereas you did have a platform for the Black Lives Matter movement and people were listening to it, don't nobody want to hear from you now. You're dating Minka Kelly. Minka Kelly loves black dick while we're on it, okay? Because remember once upon a time whenever Jesse Williams, hey Jesse, I still love you because you still dating a black woman and she is dark. Jesse Williams from Grey's Anatomy, when he got divorced from his wife, 
Now, that's another person who blocked me on social media. Jesse Williams' ex-wife, the one that says, everyone said she was real funny looking and she was too ugly to have Jesse Williams. That girl. She has me blocked. So add her, add her on the list. Um, she, the first person that he dated after that, and it was rumored that he cheated on his wife. What is her name? It's kind of an aura or something like that. Um, with Minka Kelly. Okay, so wait, she likes light skin, black dick. Correction, okay? So now, Minka Kelly, girl, you in danger. You may want to go outside with a full mask on, covering your entire face, because black women may start spitting at you, because they're just tired, they're pissed off. Trevor Noah, I would just stick to hot topics. Um, don't even talk about sports, because, you know, black people, we own sports because all the sports players are black, so we kind of feel like we own the NBA and stuff. Like, don't even talk about that. Talk about hockey. Don't even talk about chicken. Don't talk about chicken. Uh, don't talk about anything black, period, because that is going to set people off. And, you know, it's so sad, in all seriousness, because people have asked me, how are you so pro-black and your husband's white? Because my ass is black. I don't think any more needs to be said, you know? Whenever you, uh, I, I, I'm not dating producer James clearly as a trophy. <laughs> I thought I was doing it for money, but I fucked that up too. No, but I, in all seriousness, people have questioned me about that. I'm like, um, despite the color of my husband, I wake up black, I go to sleep black. When I take a piss and a shit, I'm black, so I don't get it. But I, I do understand the frustration that comes from black women because, like, here we go again. Here's this person who claims it's enough you have white, <laughs> okay? And we still embraced you. We embraced you, Trevor Noah, who isn't all that funny to me. Do you think he's that funny? His stand-up was funny. And I've never seen your stand-up. Okay, actually, I've never fucking heard of you until you start being on, what is it, E? Is he on E? I think he was just on The Daily Show. The Daily? What channel was that? Comedy Central. Yeah. I, yeah. I've never watched your show. I did not hear about you until then. I was like, oh, who's he? I don't like his hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he needs a different haircut. It looks so soulful. Um, it looks like, like a haircut that Martin Luther King Jr. had when he was doing the march with the, when he, when he said, when he gave the, I have a dream speech, that's the same haircut that Trevor Noah has currently. Um, it just, the thing about it is that it seems that they've been dating for a while and he was trying to hide the fact that he was dating Minka Kelly. So that really kind of fucked you up. I don't really know what you can do right now, Trevor Noah, but leave the whole BLM movement. Leave it alone. Find you know what? Jump on the Asian bandwagon and help the help Mulan get some more people to pay thirty dollars to watch it. Hashtag save Mulan. Save. You know who are some other? Let's see. Let's name some other black celebrities who clearly refuse to date black women. Uh, we've got The Rock. Uh, yeah, he's half Samoa, but still, he's he. His first wife was not black. His current wife is not black either. Uh, Tiger Woods, oh God, <laughs> Jesus, um, yeah, he just stay confused, confused. He didn't even cheat on his white wife with non-white women, I don't think. I think all the uh, oh. Perkins waitresses he banged was also white. Yeah, I don't think, I, I, I guarantee you Tiger Woods has never slept with a black woman. <laughs> um, we've got Michael Jordan, who used to be married to a black woman and cheated on her and left her to marry someone who's white. Jamie Foxx. Um, who else? There's quite, know. there's so many that I can't even sit here and think about it. But, 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 there are some black men out there who have found success and said, I still love my black woman. Idris, he just had a baby with his black wife. You got Courtney B. Vance, who's married to Angela Bassett, but I bet Angela will beat him up if he actually tried to leave. That's a lot of woman. Uh, right that's there. a lot of woman right there. That's a lot of muscle in a woman, okay? Uh, who else do we have? Denzel Washington. He is with the same Denzel Washington and Samuel L. Jackson, Magic Johnson. All three are still married to the black women that they were married to before they found success. Damn. 
and they'd have written, wait a minute, they're probably richer than all the other ones that I'm, hmm, hmm, maybe I should try to date me a really rich, soulful sounding, probably was born in the 50s, black actor. Hmm, can you think of anyone else? It's not something I track. Here's a double standard, though. Here's, here's a double standard. But they get mad at black women for dating outside of our race. I don't, I don't understand. It's all racist. It's all ultimately. racist, you know? Again, you don't have to be racist when you can be a fucking asshole like me. You don't hear anyone accusing me of being racist. Don't call me a bitch and an asshole. I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're right. So anyway, moving right along. After 20 seasons on E, Kris Jenner announced the other day that keeping up the, with the Kardashians is coming to an end. Wow. 20 seasons. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, that's really good. Look, think about where they started from the very first episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. First and foremost, so, I mean, I don't, I'm trying to think. Who has changed more? Bruce, Bruce Jenner? That's a loaded question. Bruce Jenner. But he always was kind of a pussy. So well, I mean, now he just has one. Because <laughs> he let them, they all ran him. Like, that. they just did. I, I guess he felt defeated and said, you know what, I'm going to just, if you can't beat him, join him. Which one changed the most? Which one went from being a big Sasquatch-looking girl to a, least, a less Sasquatch-looking girl? I believe you're talking about Khloe Kardashian? Yeah. The only, the only Kardashians, Kardashian Jenner, Jenners that are still recognizable are Courtney and um, Kendall. <laughs> right. Kendall. So, uh, I, you know, it's been reported that Chloe is extremely emotional, very sad about this. And actually, Chloe and Scott Disick, who is Courtney's baby daddy, uh, they said that they would keep filming even if they had to cut their salary. So, like they'd have a choice. Yeah, without the other ones on there. Yeah, I, if, you I, lose, if you lose Kim and if you lose their mom, what, what's the show? And to be truthful, Chris is actually more entertaining to watch than Kim is. That's my point. Yeah, so I don't. I, Chloe, Chloe, try, let me see. We had Chloe and Courtney take Miami. So they've done some spinoffs, but none of the spinoffs have been very successful. So it, it's in the formula of, of the Kardashian-Jenner clan all being together. So I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm thinking now E needs another K person to have a show on E. I'm just, I, Keisha K, K, Keisha, Kardashians, Kays. Keisha Kardashian. Uh, there it is, right there. Uh -huh. Call me E. Ryan Seacrest, give me a call. Eyes ready for my own show. So, do you think that people will actually miss keeping up with the Kardashians? Oh, never mind. I can answer it. No, because since they made that announcement, there's been a nonstop marathon on E of all the episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashian. I tell you, it is something very traumatic to see what they used to look like because you spend so much time saying, how did they do that? What kind of witchcraft is this that these people have done? Look at all the men that they have destroyed in these 20 seasons. It, it, it's a lot. But you know what? After that long, I probably would not want a camera crew following me around outside of the one that I hired to do it whenever I go out in public and act like, oh my gosh, no pictures, please. Knowing damn well my publicist told them exactly where I was going to be. But yeah, I mean, these people don't even shoot inside of their real homes. Everything's so fabricated. Well, it has to be. I mean, it, life can't be that interesting every minute of the day. I mean, and I watched an episode. I never watched a single episode. Until, oh, really? Uh, okay. Until the uh, marathon was on. Okay. So I watched like the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, who are these people? Mm -hmm. Because they are completely different. unrecognizable. Yeah, they really, they really, Dale's girls, with the exception of, um, Courtney and Kendall have had a lot of work done. And I don't know why they feel the need to continue to lie about it. I, I just, 
it's so obvious. And at the end of the day, you saying, yeah, I did, what difference is it going to make? You know, you're still going to be Kim Kardashian at the end of, you know. But, yes, there has been a lot of plastic surgery done. Kim's face is so different. I am so amazed that celebrities, and I don't know why plastic surgeons don't do this, I'm surprised that they haven't found celebrities or influencers to actually advertise for the doctors who did their work. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the advertising that the guy who did Kim's tits for the fourth time Just would turn be? your mic off. No, I'm strange. serious. No, because like, they do not? do that. They do that. I've never seen a commercial that where a celebrity said, look at these tits. I got these from Dr. Goldstein. Have you heard of Dr. Miami? That's a show, isn't it? No. Okay, never mind. Dr. Miami is a plastic surgeon who he gets some... Okay, Kel Lowry. She has had surgery with Dr. Miami, and she gets it for free because he films it while he's doing it, and she has to snap about it, and she advertises for him. They do that. Okay. Okay. Do you feel stupid? Slightly, but... I'd still like to see at least like local doctors being advertised by people who did the, who did had work done, for example. Do you feel stupid? I do now. Do you wish that at some point when I saw where you were going with what you were saying that I would have been a good wife and said, "Oh no 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 no, abort abort." No, I that's not you. That's not me at all. It wasn't me yesterday, and it's not me today. Probably not going to be me tomorrow. All righty. When we get back from this break, we are going to talk about the next, next, damn it, Netflix. Tell me I'm not the only person who has a hard time saying that. Netflix. There you go. Netflix film or docuseries, Cuties. It's not a docuseries. Okay. That show, I have not seen it. Producer James has, so he's really going to, you know, get, 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 get. I glitched. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I completely glitched, and I cannot <laughs> unglitch myself. Producer James will be giving his viewpoints and giving us, like, a, a, a lowdown of what this is all about because everyone is talking about it right now. And then we're also going to talk about being plus size in the year 2020. We'll be right back. Hey, Libra Lounge listeners. I'm excited to tell you about an up-and-coming podcast that I can't wait to listen to, Demystifying Diversity. What if you had the opportunity to hear compelling firsthand accounts about the often life-or-death states of unchecked biases and bigotry? Would you listen? Biracial journalist Darylise Lyons has interviewed more than 100 people, including academics, politicians, thought leaders, advocates, activists, and even an incarcerated inmate for more in-depth exploration of a wide range of topics related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Every other week for 10 weeks, she'll invite you to join her to learn more about a topic related to diversity. This podcast encourages listeners' participation. So, on alternating weeks, Adara Lease and her co-collaborator, Anna Marie Jones, will host a Q&A episode in which they answer listeners' questions, share about the interview and podcast compilation process, and dive more deeply into each episode. They are excited to partner with you to demystify diversity. The first episode of Demystifying Diversity drops in September, so wherever you listen to your podcast, make sure to subscribe to Demystifying Diversity. Welcome back to The Libra Lounge with Keisha. Um, Producer James put a little bit of oil in me, so I won't get glitch, I won't glitch anymore. Um, But everyone everywhere is talking about cuties, which is... I haven't seen it. Producer James has. I'm not going to sit here and try to figure out why he decided to watch it. I would. I hope he did it for research purposes only for the show. Yes. He's because, lying. No, really. Because every, no, I want to be real fucking careful with this one because right. um, so many people are being blamed for being pedophiles or mm-hmm. people are asking for Netflix to be canceled or to be sued. So what is the show about? So the show, it's a foreign film. It's, it's made by a uh, writer and director from Paris. And she is trying to tell the story 
of an 11 year old uh, Senegalese from Senegal, mm -hmm. Africa, of a girl who is trying to deal with the ultra conservative nature of her uh, Muslim family and then trying to find freedom through the hypersexuality of dancing and these girls that she meets who are part of this kind of dancing twerking group. It's essentially, okay. yeah. And how old is this girl? 11. So what is it that everyone is so upset about? And they're saying that Netflix is promoting uh, pedophilia because from what I hear, I'm like, shit, that sounds like Dan's moms when it used to come on <laughs> in the very beginning. I'm like, that is exactly what they did. I mean, what, 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 what? Like at any dance competition, I mean, the girls are not full. I mean, they're dressed, but they are skimpy costumes, which is just part of the dance world culture. So here's the, here's the problem, is that when Netflix first kind of put the uh, movie out there and did the uh, promotion, they talked about it just like it was that. Like okay. Like it was, you know, uh, girls on a dance team mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, they're scantily clad and they're dancing mm -hmm. suggestively, and that was it. That ain't the fucking movie. Okay, so what what is it? So the movie is uh, showing... So the director said it's a feminist movie with an activist message showing how the hyper-sexualization of our children through social media, through these other kind of outlets, is a bad thing. But they also show where this girl getting into hyper-sexual kind of situations is freed and empowered by those experiences. But she's 11 years old. 11, and that's the biggest issue. Okay, and give us an example of what you just said. I'll give you an example. So she steals a cell phone mm -hmm. from a family member, steals it, um, uses it, you know, starts watching social media, starts seeing things, and then this family member learns that she stole the phone. He wants it back. Mm -hmm. She says no so wait 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 so yeah. she tells a family member no yeah she tells this this uh, i think her uncle mm -hmm. um no and then he says no i want my phone back and then she starts to take her clothes off like she's gonna seduce him to keep the phone and then he pushes her mm -hmm. and then she runs to the bathroom with him you know yelling give me my phone back and so she started she, she had been posting on social media like you know uh you know, pictures and selfies so she takes her bottoms off takes a picture of her vagina and then uh posts that to the internet as herself that we as herself this is her so she posts a picture of her for jj this i mean it's it's this is the thing and there's another scene where she meets these girls who are like their friends and if you see them in some of the pictures they don't look like they should be 11 years old they find a used condom one of the girls picks it up, blows it up like a balloon, and then... And it's got a, nut in it? Well, I have no idea if it is okay. nut. It's just, it's a used condom on the ground. Ugh. So they blow it up, and then one girl puts it under her shirt and, like, pretends like she has breasts. And it, it's, it's all of these things that, I mean, I guess I get that you're trying to say hypersexualizing girls is bad, mm -hmm. but in none of it is a consequence that teaches them a lesson. It's all empowering and freeing, and it's a way for this little girl, Amy, to rebel against her conservative nature by doing things that no 11-year-old should do. Yeah, because here's the thing. And we shouldn't be thing. watching an 11-year-old do it. If you're 11 years old and you steal somebody's phone, I'm about to beat the holy hell out of you. So it sounds like there's just a lack of discipline, period. An 11-year-old does not know anything about true sexuality. They don't know anything about being a true feminist. They're only mimicking things that they see or hear. And in a weird way, you know, the director said she's, she's trying to show that hypersexualizing children today is a bad thing. But on the flip side, she uses those things as a way for this girl to rebel against her conservative family. Like it... it the message she's trying to say doesn't make lost. sense. It doesn't make sense. If you say you're trying to show it in a bad way, but everything about it is freeing and empowering. It doesn't make any sense at all. And it's, to me, 
11-year-olds shouldn't be dealing with any of that, and it definitely shouldn't be empowering to find your femininity before you hit puberty. Yeah, I mean, the simple fact that they picked up a used condom and blew it up and pretended like they had breasts, that is something that children do with balloons and with socks. That just shows you the, in, the immaturity of these girls, that that would be the thing that they would do, or the fact that they even picked up a used condom. How fucking disgusting is that? Well, and there's another part. So, you know, when she gets into this dance troupe, there's another girl, um, Yasmin, who kind of, I think, I'm trying to remember if she quit or she got kicked out. Either way, she tries to come back. And the main girl, like, pushes her into a pond and then sits there. This girl can't swim. So she sits there like, well, I, I'm not sure if I should save her or if I should let her die so I can go dance. Luckily, the girl, you know, grabs onto a to little life buoy and makes it out. But... Again, so we have eleven year old. She that child needs to murder. be in therapy. If she's thinking that much about sex, she's a thief. She is a, a a a murderer in the making. This child sounds like she's got a whole bunch of issues that way before you even get to being a feminist or uh, uh, empowering yourself through sexuality. Yeah, it's a really hard thing to follow when you hear the director talk about it. And then you hear and see what the, the movie critics who are who support it say. And then you actually watch it. A, it's a shitty movie. B, I can't follow the message on screen compared to the message I'm, quote, unquote, supposed to get from it. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, people are debating. They are getting into some heated debates on social media um, about this film. I don't, I don't understand it. I, I think that, yes, we do over-sexualize things in this world. That's just the state of the world that we're in right now, and it's not going to change. And that's where it's a parent's responsibility to teach their children. Well, it looks like, it seems like this child, for as strict as her parents are supposed to be, they've, they've not taught her a lot of life lessons because she sounds like a fuck-up in the making. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, one of the big issues is her mom, you know, is, is now has to take on a second marriage because that's apparently allowed in their culture. I don't mm -hmm. know why it's allowed in France, but anyway. Um, so that's another kind of an issue is her, you know, her mom is telling her be conservative. Her aunt is the one kind of pushing her to be free. And like I said, art is subjective. So mm -hmm. I'll never say that it shouldn't have been made or that it should be banned because art is art. But as a father, I would never think that that path of empowerment is right for my daughter or, frankly, anyone else's. And then you just created something for some creepy fucking pedophile to watch and jerk off to. Well, yeah. I mean, the dancing is – It's so I've seen what happens on, on uh, Dance Moms. Dance moms. Mm -hmm. This is worse. This mm -hmm. is literally like rubbing a pussy or, I mean, like reaching through your – like I've seen what Dance Moms – do, and I'm not totally cool with that, with some of those prepubescent girls, but this is just more. And to think that somebody had to direct 11 and 12 year olds to do that on camera, just it's, for me, it's uncomfortable. I don't like it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to watch it, and it's not because of what it has to do. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> just, I don't, just don't feel like watching it. Just lazy. Uh, yeah, I'm just lazy. I, I'm caught up in some other shows currently. But, yeah, this is what everyone's talking about. Now, Netflix is – it looks like they're going to be under investigation. There's a – I mean, to be honest with you, there's nothing illegal about mm -hmm. what it was done or how it was And filmed. then the parents it's had just... to sign off on it. Otherwise, they could not have made the movie. Exactly. That's why I'm saying it's not illegal. It's just – I just think it's in bad taste. and You know what you know. it probably is? I bet you. I bet you by March of next year, the real story is going to come out. And that girl, whose name is Amy, is really not 11. She's like 30. She's got that same disease that Esther had in the movie Orphan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen. And then we're all going to have been upset for nothing. The 30-year-old the, the woman is a liar, and she's pretending to be 11 years old. Um, yeah, it, this has got people fired up, and I think it's on the uh, coattail of that one woman who did the TED Talk saying that we should normalize pedophilia. Yeah, there's a lot of talk right now about uh, the idea that people are trying to normalize you know, child sexuality, trying to normalize pedophilia, which is extreme. But, I mean, that's when you see this movie yeah. and you see – like I said, the fact that 
there's no negative consequence in the end. Mm -hmm. You think, well, this was a feminist movie with an activist message of hypersexualization might be bad, but ultimately it's empowering and freeing. Yeah, you know, so many people want to stamp feminine, f being a feminist onto things, female empowerment onto things, and a lot of those things are just bullshit, and it sounds like that's the case right here with, uh, with this. I mean, I don't know why it seems like all of a sudden people are wanting to normalize children and sex. Like, those things don't go together. Here's one thing. Most grown-ups don't know what they're fucking doing when they're fucking. So a child most certainly does. I mean, really think about it. I didn't have sex in high school, but I know a lot of people who did, and they're just like, mm -hmm. no, that people don't know what they're doing, even in high school. Well, see, what happens now is that if you, if you go to the <coughs> point of saying that children are able to choose their own gender and their own sexuality, yeah. you're, you're, you almost have to make children some degree of sexually aware or have some degree of sexual agency for them for you to give validity to the idea that they can choose what gender they should be at eight nine ten and then start taking uh, puberty blockers or getting you know getting surgery things like you it it follows it has to follow or else your first claim is erroneous yeah, I'm, I get, I'm gonna leave that one alone because I don't want all the thems to come after me. Cause now <laughs> all the thems, as Dave Chappelle put it. Yeah, all the thems because it's you know I am all about the LGB, LGBTQ plus community, but I have to pump my brakes a little bit when it comes to the whole. I'm gonna let my kid decide what gender they want to be. I don't, I, you know, if my kid came to me and said, you know what, I really. I feel like I'm a man. I should have been a man. I, I feel masculine. Okay. I want to get a sex change. Okay. I'm your mom. I'm going to support you. When you're 30 and deciding this, when you're five, I, I, to me, people want to stamp, again, stamp on sexuality to something that is just curiosity. You know, yeah, there's boys who like girl things. There's nothing wrong with that. But for so many years, we have told children that that is wrong. No, if you are a girl, you play with Barbie. If you are a boy, you play with G.I. Joe. You're a fucking kid. Just play with the goddamn toy. It's, it's a thing. We're so ready to put adult issues onto children. It has them all confused. Yes, I do, I do agree that there are some people who generally are born and they're like, I am in the wrong body, okay? And if they decide that they want to make those changes, I fully support it. But not with a three-year-old. Yeah, how many other, like, life-changing decisions do you do you impart to a child? I ain't the same person I was yesterday. Well, no, what I mean, I mean is, you like, know? like, if your 11-year-old said, I'm an, I identify as an astronaut, okay. do you take them to NASA and put them in astronaut training? No. No, I'd probably just buy her the astronaut Barbie. If your kid said... I'm white, but I identify as black. Would you would you support them and take them I'm to black a, I'm going to make them sit down and watch Roots. So that's yeah. my point. There's like, a lot of like, things. Yeah. There's a lot of things that when it boils down to is lack of parenting because people, parents don't want to parent because parents are so much more interested in being a cause. You was married to somebody who liked that. They're all about a cause rather than doing the actual things that go along with parenting. Woke parenting is the worst. Yeah, it's just, so be parent. I think parents need to go back and really learn about being parents. So moving right along, uh, speaking of parents, my mom had a conversation with me yesterday about losing weight. And I couldn't even really get mad at her because she's right. But it led me to thinking about, um, people have been talking so much about, oh, the COVID-15, the COVID-15. I think I probably gained everybody's COVID-15, COVID-30, COVID-45, COVID-100. Um, so, it, you know, I was scrolling through Instagram and I was like, hmm, so many women don't want to be plus size, but they want plus size accessories. Does that make sense? Explain that one for some of our Okay, audience. all right. So what that means is I don't want to be fat, but give me fat girl titties and give me a fat girl booty oh. and give me fat girl thighs, but make me super, super slim. And I'm like, but I don't want to be fat. That's that slim thick. 
thing, right? The slim thick. It is, it's, 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 it's kind of remind. I glitched again. It kind of reminds me of when white women um, do all that damn tanning. Bitch, just be, you want to be black. It's okay. Just say that. It's a lot of y'all that just want to be black. Okay. It's the same thing with this. It's, it, it's, I want, this is what it is. I want all the goodness of something, but don't give me the bad parts of it. You know what I mean? Yes, I want to be one shade lighter than, darker than Will Smith, but I don't want to be black. I'm not going to be in the marches with you guys. It's kind of like that. A, I want to have a great big juicy ass, but not But I don't want to be fat. No, 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 no. I don't want the diabetes. To I don't want the sugar diabetes. I don't want the sugar blood. You know what I mean? It is all that. And it's so annoying. It is so annoying when you see someone who is not um, black or Hispanic and, oh, wow, she has a big butt. Now big butts are in. Big butts have not, they didn't just pop up all of a sudden. They've been here for quite a while. I guess they were all just on the wrong shade of characters, uh, per se. So, yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it has led to... Plus size women now wanting to empower being plus size. Okay, now now mind you, plus size starts at a size ten because that means you're you're in the double digits. So technically, that's supposed to be plus size. I consider plus size to be like size fourteen and up. Um, but now it's an, it, it, what it has done, kind of like what we were talking about with cutes. Um, it has empowered women that are plus size, but not necessarily healthy, okay? These bitches be obese in bikinis. No, 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 no. So it's all about that empowerment again. It is putting a stamp on something that is not good for people. Like, okay, I'm fat. I know it's not good to be fat. I need to lose weight. Therefore, you don't hear me going around saying, with a bikini on saying, I'm fine, I'm plus size, this is how real woman, yeah, but your fat ass is going to be in the casket in like your 30s. You know what I mean? It is putting up the wrong thing. Now, I will say you've got people like Ashley Graham, who is a plus size model, but you see that bitch working out. She still works out. She still eats well. She's just like, I'm never going to be a size two, and I'm not trying to be a size two. She's technically still plus size, but plus you can be plus size and healthy, but you cannot be obese and healthy. And I be seeing some obese bitches, and I'm like, oh, Lord. So that's the problem. Like, it's, it's you know, on the one side, you say you should be proud to, you know, Proud of the body you're in. Right. Right. You should have good self-esteem. That Stop and, right there. Okay. That's what it is. Yes, you should have good self-esteem. I have good self-esteem. I have good self-esteem at my smallest size, and I have good self-esteem at my largest size. It doesn't phase me. That's why I'm not in therapy. That's why some of y'all be in therapy, because y'all don't know what it's like to be truly happy in the skin that you're in, even when I'm stretching that skin to the max. Kind of like I am right now, my skin is like, little bitch, we about to pop. You just going to be a whole fucking stretch mark if you don't stop. Okay? But I <laughs> know how to be happy no matter what size that I am in. So that's why I'm not preaching to y'all about, I'm not going to encourage people to be fat because that leads to being unhealthy. But then that's fat shaming. That is not fucking fat shaming. No, but it is. is not. That is trying to help your ass save. It's what? trying to save a life. Well, that's what I'm saying is like nowadays, if you, you attach shaming onto everything and I'm, it's, it's so ridiculous. You should encourage people to live their best life. Okay. Well, and what some people will say is, well, I'm 800 pounds. This is my best life. I mean, in a house because you can't be well, transported I, anywhere else. So it's, just, it's, it's a weird thing of, yeah, you, you want someone to be healthy. Right. But if you tell them that now you're shaming who they are. You're invalidating them. You're, you know, you're saying I shouldn't exist. You're doing no, all these no things. one's saying that. Like, you know what I mean? People like to tack on all these additional definitions to things. No, like I'll give you an example. A few months back, Jill, who is it? Is it Jillian Michaels, the one who's a celebrity? Oh yeah, Jillian Michaels. She made a comment about Lizzo and Lizzo's weight, and everyone got so upset because she was fat shaming. No, she wasn't. 
What she said was the truth, and I can't recall exactly what she said, but what she said was true, that Lizzo, at the size that she is, is at risk of getting diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol. But no, all of you fucking illiterate bitches, like, uh-uh, she's fat shaming. No, she's not. But I tell you what, as mad as Lizzo wants to pretend like she was, go to her Instagram page right now. Bitch that lost about 30 pounds. So she, she listened. It is, people don't know how to take constructive criticism at all. We have a world full of fucking pussies. You can't criticize. You cannot criticize you that I can. You can't be even be constructive. You can't. If it disagrees with the person's No, position. people don't know how to disagree. And, and people don't even, can't even disagree on like the most insignificant of things. Like, oh, that's red. No, it's not. That's, that. no, here it is. That's pink. No, it's not. That's red and white put together. Bitch, okay, pink. It's pink, but you want to get into an argument because you both said the same thing differently. So it's like one person has to be right, one person has to be wrong. Now, all I'm saying, I'm, look, I have a person who has struggled with my weight all of my life. I have been on every diet. I've had every surgery. I've done everything, done every kind of cleanse. I, I've taken every kind of diet pill, okay? I've yo-yoed all my life. That is something that is a vice for me. Food is a vice for me. I... I mistreat food. I am addicted to food. When you plan in meals around a TV show and what time it's going to come on and, ooh, this meal would go good with that TV show, you have a problem. Like me. I have a problem with food. I always have. It will be a lifelong struggle, okay? Even when at my smallest, it is still, food is always on my mind. I'm a food addict. You know what I mean? Um, I yeah. am. Yeah, when you start planning your snacks around your meals, you yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, uh, for example, my daughter Skylar. <laughs> so we cooked the full meal. She comes downstairs. She makes her plate of everything that you know, the whole meal. But the bitch also took a bag of fucking tortilla chips with her. It wasn't even Mexican food. <laughs> yeah. So and and I've told her from an early age. I'm like, this is something that runs in our family. This is something that. All of the women on this side of the family have struggled with, and I told her, you have seen me, you've seen your grandmother, you've seen James, you've seen us all struggle with our weight. It's easy to pack on the pounds, but it is fucking hard as hell to get rid of them. So I think that we should, it's, it kind of goes along with the whole cutest things. There's ways to, it's discipline. It's discipline on all angles. It's, it's discipline about, no, you don't take your uncle's cell phone, because I'm going to beat the shit out of you. No, you as an 11-year-old, you don't go take a pussy picture because I'm going to strangle you if you do that. Hey, if you overeat that, you are not going to be able to fit into those pants. Everyone's so, so fucking sensitive right now that you can't even tell people what's good for them. I'm not talking about Black Lives Matter, okay? We're not talking about that. That's a totally different subject. So don't y'all say, I was listening to the Libra Lounge Keisha show, and she says that there shouldn't be a Black Lives Matter. That means y'all are all pussies. I didn't say that, but there'll be some person that says that I did, but I did it. It's just about disciplining, and it's about being honest. We're not even teaching each other to be honest with ourselves. I'm fat. I know that I am fat. Do I ever walk around acting like I'm skinny? Never. Do I try to wear skinny girl clothes? Nope. Thank you. Because I'm not in fucking denial. But I know I can lose the weight, and I'm going to be the same bad bitch that I am right now. It really doesn't matter. But my question is, do men still find, find plus-size women attractive? Sure they do. I think so, too. Black guys do. No. Oh, they, they, they find plus-size women attractive when they when attached to an ugly white girl. No, you, forgot the, you forgot that part. <laughs> well, no. I mean, they do. I mean, here's the thing. Out of billions of people... There's someone who will like anything about you. I mean, that period. is true. I mean, there's people who love Auntie T. Steve, Steve Bushimi is married. Yep. His eyes can't even get along. <laughs> they can't even decide, decide which direction they're going to look in. They're always fucking fighting. They, his eyes are like Siamese twins, like the double headed Siamese twins. One's looking this way, one's looking that way. There are sideshow people married with families. Yeah, yes. And then they fuck up and are like, God. Damn, my baby came out with them claws. Well, bitch, you <laughs> fucked the claw, man. There's a chance. You your baby, baby. Who, yeah, you, you, you fucked lobster boy. So now you've got a family of lobster hands. And you don't want to look as stupid because you got all ten digits. Uh, but it's just... <laughs>
I thought it was actually kind of fucking mean. <laughs> oh, now you're lobster shaming. They're gonna, the claws are gonna come after me. And you know I'm weird about hands. Hands freak me out when they're not correct. Why well, do you feel about just fingers? Like literally Those two, only finger like, hands. Uh, there, there are some things that, not a lot of things weird me out, but the ones that do, weird, the things that do weird me out are the fucking stupidest of things. It's like, why the fuck does that make you scared? Like hands. Like if, if Lobster Boy would have walked in here right now, I would leave. Like, no, I would leave. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to say hello. I'm not going to tell you goodbye. I'm going to just pick my purse up and go, this is not the place for me anymore. And I'm just not going to come anymore. I'm just not. I have a weird things with what do you call extremities? What do you call them? Extremities. Yeah. Extremities. Yeah. I just, I just do. It, it, I, I do. I don't know why. Even with like, since we're talking about fat people, like really fat people that like have sausage linked fingers, that scares me. See, I'm fat, but I don't have fat fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I mean, I, I have that sideshow gene. Like, if I see something He weird, wants to, he loves I, it. I'm there for it. I live for it. I love uncomfortable situations. And I'm running my fat ass running, trying to find a, an Uber. Please take me back to the south side oh, no. right I'm now. I'm Kermit the Frog, sipping on iced tea, going, that's I your can't, business. I can't. I can't. I can't. As much as I love babies, the uh, the... Thinking about a lobster claw baby, that would probably make me pass out. <laughs> like, <laughs> could, like you, could you love a lobster baby? Oh, if they covered up the put those mittens on it. What, you mean like the penguin and Batman? They, gets this, little, they put the, the, the gloves. Something I don't know. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut them off. Um, it's amazing what we can do with science and technology. They can build your baby a whole hand with all five fingers. Okay, so. <laughs> To go along with that, so you know you have Dr. Pimple Popper, and then you have the new show, My Feet Are Killing Me. I have, I have watched a lot of episodes of Dr. Pimple Popper, but guess how many episodes I've watched of My Feet Are Killing Me? Negative one. None! I'm scared! It scares me! It just, it just, I don't know what it is about extremities. Like, look, damn it, we're supposed to have ten of these. Ten of them. Ten. Okay? And they should be like the size of a pencil. Nothing more. There shouldn't be big bulbous things growing on them. And you should have all of them. All of them. I just, I can't. There is something about extremities that just, it freaks me. It freaks me out. You know, I can sit there and watch the man who's got a hundred pound tumor attached to his balls. That I can watch. But you put that on someone's foot? No. <laughs> Mm -mm. Can I? And I don't know. Maybe it's because for me, a tumor that size growing on a ball. So I'm like, that's just like one in a million. But anything can happen to your hands or your feet. I can't. Every time they, that commercial comes on about my feet are killing me, I change the channel. I can't see. I cannot even see the commercial for it. It freaks me the fuck out. Like even like my 600 pound um, life. I'm good until they show the fat fingers and toes. I cannot take, I, look, I can watch a whole episode of that and the only thing I'll come out with, with would be, do you see her feet? It looked like someone had plastic gloves and blew them up. Those were her feet and I'll have nightmares about it. Okay, so everyone knows that I love uh, all the Little Women franchise on uh, Lifetime. Let me tell you. It took me a long time to get over my fear, not of little people, but of little people's fingers. Remember when I was just like, I can't do it. It's too much. It was too much. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat. And I know it sounds horrible, horrible. And I'm ashamed of this. I am. I am very ashamed of it. I could, not, I could watch a show with little people cringing the whole time and kind of be okay but if i were to eat a meal and a little people show came out i'd want to throw up and it was because of their fingers but i'm over that now i i i did self-therapy and i said to myself i am not gonna let whatever fucked upness it is about me because it's on me it is on me stop me from being entertained by these fabulous short women 
I'm not going to do it. I'm going to love them from their short little fingers all the way to their itty bitty toes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just, it was a weird thing. And you know how much, because he's still shot now at how much I am in love with the Little Women franchise. I'm like, oh, my girls are coming on because once upon a time, mm -mm, I could not do it. Uh, I just, I don't know. I can't even explain it. It's just we all have that weird thing about us that we don't like something. And it, it just makes us uncomfortable, and you don't know why it is. Like, Yeah, I got that with somebody being too close to my face. I don't like things in my face. I mean, I, like, painfully, like, get away. No, no, no. But he like it when I'm in his face. Well, that's different. Mm -hmm. All right, so when we get back, we are going to – I'm going to give the bitch please of the week, and we're all gonna also going to talk about quickly – Dick pics being illegalized. Is that, is that a such word? Illegalized? It is? It's a real word? Yeah, legalized. I know legalized, but it's illegalized. I guess it is now. It's in Webster. We we'll are back. Sassy Class Boutique is the hot spot for your fashion, beauty, and home decor desires. We celebrate women of all shapes and sizes with our trendy collection of regular and plus size clothing. Looking for the right accessories? We have upcycled Louis Vuitton handbags, vegan purses, and jewelry to add sass to your class. We also offer health and beauty products from salon quality hair care to cruelty free makeup. Our edgy home decor items will make you the envy of all of your neighbors. Sassy Class Boutique also offers custom items like shirts, hats, and other gifts for any occasion. All of our vendors are female-owned small businesses, and together we are Sassy Class Boutique. Located at 3709 Fatter Drive in Dickinson, Texas, 77539. Or shop anytime with us at www.sassyclassboutique.com. Bitch, please! Rolling down the street, telling stories, bitch, you never tell the truth, bitch, please. Everybody know you lying, bitch, cause all you do is lie. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Libra Lines with Keisha and just listening to the stupidity that is producer James and I. Um, this show is built around shit that we think is entertaining and probably... A large majority of society doesn't, but you guys are listening to it anyway. We want you to keep listening to us and invite all your friends and family to listen to us as well. <laughs> all right, so in the state of Texas, some things have happened in the last couple of weeks. Number one, which I'm so excited about, a fucking brass knuckles are now legal to have. Producer James is very scared because, you know, I have one of, the, I have one of those illegal police batons that you have to, like, pop out. And I've never had to use it against a person. I mean, the only person I've ever hit with the one is producer James. So he's a little bit fearful of the brass knuckles. So what else, what other laws did they pass along with that? Um, well, the biggest one, the most important one, is the fact that they have now made unsolicited uh, dick pics or new, uh, naked pics of any kind a felony. Mm -hmm. I've been telling y'all that. I have been telling men for years, look. Stop just sending women dick pics. Let them request to have one or at least send a text beforehand and say, look, I'm about to send you a dick pic. Check yes if you want me to go ahead and do it or check no if you don't. You cannot just send a dick pic. Like, that shit is traumatizing. Okay? Do you know how many people's kids are on their cell phones playing games and so the parent doesn't have to be parenting and your stupid ass sends a dick pic and you scar little Amy from Cuties for Life? You can't do that shit anymore. It's now illegal to do it. So how do you prove that someone sent you a dick pic and you did not ask for it? Well, that's a good question. I guess you could show uh, the chat stream. What if you told them over the phone, hey, uh, well, when we get off this phone, I want you to send me a dick pic. I, I mean, do you know how many bitches are going to get pissed off at a dude? Because they didn't call him back and didn't go to the police station and say, uh-uh, he didn't send any his dick pics and I didn't want them. That's going to happen. Yeah, it's kind of scary, isn't it? It's very scary. I cannot wait for the first Lifetime movie that they made based on the fact that dick pics are now illegal. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yes. 
Um, they also raised the uh, smoking age for cigarettes to 21. I think that's good. I think it should have always been 21. You know? You think so? Yeah. Skylar's 18. Do you think she's smart? Never mind. Skylar, if you're watching, turn that off real quick. Do you think she's smart enough to make a decision about whether or not she should be smoking and all the deadly consequences to come along with it? Look, I think if you're old enough to uh, make the choice to go into military service and die for the country, you should have the same freedom at 18 that you have at 22. I don't think That's that 18-year-olds are old enough to even make that decision, to go into the military and to die for a country when they don't even understand. Do you know that it's some 18-year-olds who don't even know how to properly clean their genitalia? Yeah. Okay. Case in point. But you want this person to make a decision about smoking cigarettes? Or defending our country, I just think that there needs to be some years added on to it. So I think 21 is a good age for the cigarettes. What else? Do what? Do you have to be a certain age to have the brass knuckles? 18. Oh, okay. I'm surprised he told the truth. I'm surprised he didn't say 45 because he knows I still got another five years before I'm 45. Because he's very afraid of me using the brass knuckles on him, which could happen. Yeah, I'm actually kind of worried about that. Mm-hmm. So. Are those all the new laws that passed? Yeah. No, there were some others. That, but they're just like, not important. Yeah, they're not as yeah. interesting uh, at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so I did have one bitch please picked out, but then something hilariously funny happened on the way to us filming the show, and producer James is like, that needs to be your bitch please of the week. <sighs> okay. Many of you know me by Keisha, but my government name is Ra Keisha, okay? It is R A. K-E-I-S-H-A. Rakisha, this is the year 2020, okay? There's not new babies born that are being named Keishas, okay? The time of the Keishas was, what, 1975 to maybe, let's just say 1999, okay? Past that point, before that point, past that point, people were not no longer naming their babies Keishas. But there's a lot of fucking Keishas in the world. You have seen Makishas, Lakisha, Shakisha, Keisha, Zakisha, Matisha. You've seen all the Keishas. So when you see that name written down, you kind of have a clue what it is. None of y'all assholes messed up Kesha's name, and she fucking spelled one of the letters with a damn dollar symbol. But you still pronounce Kesha right. But you want to fuck up my name all the time. Case in point. Um, I remember, you know, whenever we would have a substitute teacher, whenever I was in high school. Oh, is James Owens here? Is Ian McKellen here? Is Joshua here? Sarah? Lauren? Laura? Lori? Lorraine? Here. Then there's always the pause. And you know what the pause meant? What did it mean, Producer James? I have no idea. Uh, no idea. How to pronounce they have name. gotten to my name, okay? I can respect the person saying, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Can you pronounce it for me? Of course, no problem. But this is what motherfuckers do instead. I got called Rashaska, Ricochet, Rashika. They even tried to make it Muslim one time. Rashida, they literally were just like, are you even... Are you, what document are you reading from? Let me see it because maybe that's not even me. So I got a phone call from the doctor's office and the lady says, hi, this is so-and-so from UTMB. Can I speak to, ooh. She literally said, right, oh. Normally on a good day, I'd be like, it's Rakesha. But I started my period today. So I just let her, we just both sat in fucking dead silence. Dead silence. Until she finally said, Rakisha, bing, ding, 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 ding. You got it right. All you got to do is break it down. Rakisha. Okay? But here, here and I, I have to explain this to producer James because, of course, he thinks that shit's fucking funny because he's got the most normal of fucking boring vanilla names, James Owens. All right? So my maiden last name is Holman. Whole man. And it is spelled H O L M A N. That, that's pretty easy to me. Holman, okay? No. 
people see the Rakesha part and they fucking just lose all confidence. So they start fucking up the simple names. Holloman? Heyman? Hyman? It's Holman. Okay. So then I marry a man whose last name is Owens. Again, they see the Rakesha and it's just like, I don't, I don't. Oh, Olsen? Really? How do you, and then I get, how do you spell Owens? Everyone has had a pack of Owens sausages in their homes. Everyone knows who Terrell Owens is. Owens, that is a name. You're going to know at probably at least 20 Owenses before, in your lifetime before you die. Okay? But they fuck up on the Owens. Owens? Sometimes they make me confused. I'm like, is that how you really pronounce my name? I've been pronouncing it wrong all my life. But this is how clearly how this bitch right here just said it. That's how you say my name. So producer James is like, how often does that happen? All the time. It happens a lot. Okay. But I, I, so, look, so you can't say Rakesha. All right. How about you just say Miss Owens? Go, go to the simple parts. They can't even do that shit. They want to sit there and hear me. Hear, they want me to hear them stutter and fuck up my God-given name over and over and over again. And then when I say, Rakesha, ah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it fucking smells. Yes, that is what it is. I still think my favorite, the only one that I could actually see somebody like messing up properly is Ricochet. And it happened. Like it happened. I still have classmates that call me Ricochet. But yes, I do. Ricochet. And because it's just, were you even trying? Like Ricochet. Look, I don't want to be racist, but some of the black names I've seen, which look like somebody just played Boggle, uh, I could see how somebody could not assume how to pronounce it correctly. But they never mess up on love, Keisha. Like, yeah. people who know me, I've been called Ro Keisha, Re Keisha, Rack Keisha. And I, that's why I just go by Keisha. Because when people, a lot of people don't even realize that Rakisha is my name. It's like, yes, that is my name. And you know what? I, and I, I'm fine with using Rakisha. But you assholes who obviously didn't grow up near any inner city schools and had no black friends want to continue to say my name so fucking wrong. So I just, I just, I just go by Keisha. I just, I just... I, when they started messing up my last name, I was just like, okay, is this a fucking joke? Or is it, it's, you just trying to be funny, right? You're bored with your day and you're trying to, surely you're trying to enter entertain yourself along with the rest of your office mates. So you're going to be like, watch what I'm going to, I'm going to call this girl. Watch what I'm going to do. Watch what I'm going to do. <laughs> Miss Ricochet, Holloman, Hose. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, there's sometimes I don't even correct people. I'm like, mm, that's me. Because yeah, you get tired. This is a 40 years. 40 years of this. Soon to be 41. Soon to be 41. But I don't look it. <laughs> Producer James is mad because I, I don't, I'm not aging like he is. He's aging like typical white people. Horribly. I looked 40 when I was 20. He did. I knew him when he was yeah. 20. You looked 40 in junior high. Yeah. You really did. So, yes. That's why he's like, that really should be the bitch please of the week. How many? That, then a lot of you have received the bitch please of the week because a lot of you motherfuckers have messed up my name. And you know what? I, I, today I just had had enough. We, me and that woman sat in dead silence for tw t 20 minutes. 20 minutes! Because I wasn't going to help her out today. I wasn't going to help her out. You can't tell me that you work for UTMB in Galveston County and you ain't seen no other names. You've probably seen a name that's like all consonants in one vowel. Exactly, but you want to mess up my, it's, my name is really, you, it, it's spelled just like it sounds. You can sound it out. Yeah, ruh, he, and then the bitch said it right. After 20 minutes, she said it right. I'm like, all right, 
You know what? Then I need to stop making it easier for all the motherfuckers. We're just going to wait till you figure it out. I'm not going to fucking help you. Not at all. This is not Will of Fortune. You're not just going to keep picking letters and adding them and replacing them to my name. Okay? My mom and them gave me that name. They spelt it that way. The human scrabble. Exactly. That's what it is. Okay. okay, let me roll. Let me roll. Let me roll. Let me roll. Let me say right ahead. Let me turn right Okay, so we, we got a P. Well, Pisha, you know? <laughs> Pakisha. Yes. So, anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in this week. Uh, we are truly grateful. We will see you guys next week. Please stop fucking up black girls' names. Just, just try a little bit. It's hard for us. It hurts our feelings. It really does. It makes us feel like we're not so important, especially those of us who are fat, too. <laughs> stop name shaming. Stop name shaming me, damn it. It's Pakisha. All right, so... Be safe and stay COVID free. It's the Libra Lounge. The Libra Lounge. Ooh.